teen driver hits parked car. UW Extension study shows troubled waters in town of Sherman. Evers to assemble task force on student loan debt. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Thursday, January 30th, 2020. A 17-year-old Sheboygan female was arrested after she, the car she was driving hit a parked car at 10th and St. Clair on Sheboygan Wednesday night. Sheboygan police were called to the scene around 7.20. When they arrived, the car that the teen was driving had started on fire. The teen was arrested for having restricted controlled substance in her system. The crash is still under investigation and the teen was later released from custody. Wisconsin water quality has been under the magnifier for issues such as PFAs and other pollutants. But an ongoing study by the Sheboygan County's UW Extension Community Program development educator Kevin Strzok shows that there are other immediate concerns locally. Each year Kevin conducts one well tester event in the Sheboygan County town and in 2019 that was the town of Sherman. The results showed coliform bacteria in nearly a quarter of the 80 samples submitted. That compares with a statewide average of 15 percent. While the troubling only two of the 19 contaminant wells showed the presence of dangerous E. coli bacteria. Regardless, the presence of any coliform shows a pathway for harmful organisms exists. Other results included 5% exceeding nitrate limits, 25% exceeded limits for naturally occurring arsenic, but none were excessively high private well owners are advised to test their wells every 15 months to assure quality, but 37% of the town of Sherman residents had not tested their wells in at least 10 years. Those with questions should contact the UW Extension at 459-5900. Battling homelessness in Wisconsin is an ongoing process. According to the NPR, 2019 homeless numbers in the Badger State declined 7.5% from 2018. But the struggle continues for over 4,500 men, women, and children. The majority of those reside in shelters and a bill signed into law Tuesday by Governor Evers should make it easier to fund those facilities. Wisconsin Act 76 enables the Department of Administration to use grant funds for homeless shelters, allows those funds to equal up to half of the organization's operating budget, and allows funds to be used for sheltering victims of domestic abuse. The act also seeks waivers for federal approval of intensive case management services and directs that the Wisconsin Housing and Economic Development Authority to pay $1 million from its surplus to general fund. The list of candidates who will be on the ballot for Wisconsin's April 7th presidential primary has been finalized. It includes 12 Democratic candidates and President Donald Trump, the bipartisan state presidential preference selection committee earlier this month selected candidates to appear on the ballot and Tuesday was the deadline for them to secure necessary signatures to be added. Republican candidate is Donald J. Trump and Democratic candidates are Michael, er, Michael Bennett, Joe Biden, Michael Bloomberg, Pete Buttigieg, John Delaney, Tulsi Gabbard, Amy Klobuchar, Deval Patrick, Bernie Sanders, Tom Steyer, Elizabeth Warren, Andrew Yang, 
and Trump's Republican challengers, former Illinois Cron Congressman Joe Walsh and former Massachusetts Governor William Weld, both failed to obtain the approximately 88,000 signatures needed to get on the ballot. Democrats Cory Booker and Moraine Williamson have suspended their campaigns. Governor Tony Evers has signed an executive order to assemble a task force aimed at finding solutions to lo student loan debt. The panel will include Evers, the former state superintendent of schools, along with representatives from the University of Wisconsin system and the state's technical colleges. Department of Financial Institution Secretary Kathy Blumenfield will serve as the chairwoman for the task force. According to the executive order signed Wednesday in Pewaukee, the group will study the causes of student loan debt and brainstorm possible solutions. Evers promised to assemble the task force during the last week's State of the State address. And finally, an unexpected call to the Brown County Dispatch Center Sunday afternoon is what helped save the life of a young woman being held captive more than 2,000 miles away. For the dispatcher working on the call, it was an unsettling situation. There were even some thoughts that the caller was making it up. That went very quickly out of my mind, and it was very apparent that she needed our help and that it was a real call, said dispatch supervisory Ch Tracy Ertel. Ertel said that the girl told her that she had met a man online and had flown from Green Bay to the Dominican Republic to meet him. But when she got there, she was held inside a house with chains on it and had a hard time calling for help. She said she was afraid and abused. Her items were taken from her, her passport, and she said she had to keep earning her items back, she added. But luckily, the woman was able to escape to a local market where she called the Brown County non-emergency line using Wi-Fi and an app on a device. Ertel was then able to get in contact with the U.S. Embassy overseas to help locate her. Hours later, immigration officers found the woman and brought her to safety. Ertel credits her dispatch staff's quick re responses and the Green Bay police officers who got involved. We hope that call, a call like that does not come in, but at least citizens know we are ready to take those calls if they come, she said. Officials have not s said when the woman will be heading back to Green Bay, and there is no word on if the man who has held her captive has been arrested. And that is our report for today. Join me again on Tuesday for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.